presenting a case where uh, I used imaging for a complex bifurcation PCI, and it was done exactly a year back on 5th of February 2021. Uh, 56 years old male presented to us. He was a known case of diabetes and hypertension and had recent onset exertional angina for the past two months. He was stable. His baseline ECG was normal. We got his TMT done and it was strongly positive at six minutes. Echo said there was no RWM and EF was normal. And so we took him uh, for an angiogram and this was the angiography. You can see done to the right radial approach. And there was a bifurcation disease of LED diagonal, which is very clearly uh, visible in this uh, uh, view, aleocranial. And the, it was 111 Medina. And you can see the diagonal ostium was very tight, although it was very focal. And LED uh, disease was also very, very critical. And there was also disease of left circumflex, uh, which you can see here and better appreciated in, uh, in the coronal view, which I will show in the next slide here. Uh, this is the AP canal view. Again, you can appreciate that there is a Medina 111 bifurcation disease of LED diagonal and a very critical stenosis of LED almost of the tune of 95%. And this was the model view where uh, disease of CERC becomes apparent. And you can see that there was almost 90% stenosis in the uh, this is CERC. And just add to the complexity, after a, uh, a, a normal zone, there, again, there was a tandem region with around 50% stenosis before it got uh, uh, divided into the OMs. And the caudal view, one more thing which was appreciable, that LED was uh, disease at its ostium as well with uh, distal left mint plucking. So, uh, this view, uh, and this was the RCA, which was normal and a dominant vessel. And you can see in the RAO view that it was giving collaterals, grade one collaterals to LED. Now, this was the pictorial uh, picture and the diagnosis. We were uh, dealing with a double vessel disease with LED diagonal bifurcation, Medina 111, with almost 95% stenosis of the LED. And importantly, D1 was also critically diseased, but the disease was limited to the ostium. So there is always a controversy whether we should go for a dedicated two cent strategy or a uh, provisional crossover strategy. And the, to add to the complexity, the LED ostium was diseased, and we had to decide whether we have to come from the uh, an ostium of LED or from the left main to LED. So this was a very uh, critical uh, decision to make. And the last thing where would be the landing zone of LCX. And we had decided that we will not try to cover this 50% stenosis distally because otherwise there will be a, a mismatch in the sizes of the distal and proximal segment. And we will, and with imaging, we could appreciate the good landing zone here. So that was our uh, if we had to uh, go with the PCI. So syntax score here was 23 and both Fourier mortality with PCI or CABG was comparable. So we gave option of both cabbage and multivessel PCI to this patient. And at that moment, he, he chose for medical therapy and said that he would like to have a go with medical management only and did not want any intervention to be done. But anyways, we had kept this possibility that if we go for any intervention, the main things which we will look for, whether we will go for a single stent strategy or a Duchenne strategy across the LED diagonal bifurcation. And the other thing, whether we would cover from the LED ostium or from the distal left if we had to do PCI, this we will do only with uh, imaging if available. And now this patient did not remain stable for long and came back three weeks later with unstable angina. He had resting symptoms at that time and we did not have emergency cabbage facility at that moment. The only option available with us was PCI. And so this was the plan which we decided that we will take a 3.57 French EBU, right fetal approach. We will wire both LED and diagonal and then we will image and we will take a LED to LMCA pullback and then we will decide whether we have to come from the LED ostium or from the LMCA to LED that that was uh, to be decided after, only after imaging. And so this was uh, with the guiding uh, again, we, to, uh, we took the uh, shot of LED and you can see the flow in LED had further compromised. Probably this was the cause of his worsening symptoms. And you can appreciate that the LED ostium was also diseased. So, uh, as soon as we passed a wire in the diagonal, the disease was so tight across uh, across the bifurcation that flow in LED absolutely stopped. And we had a hard time rewiring the LED. We had to use balloon support and very crudely, because that became emergency at that time, patients starting having chest pain with ECC changes. So ultimately, we uh, rather we just pushed our wire with the balloon support into the LED and that was as a last resort. And after that, we dilated uh, both LED and diagonal with a 2.5 into 10 NC balloon. And after these dilatation, patient's condition, his chest pain improved and his condition stabilized. Now was the time to 
decide our uh, strategy and that could be done with imaging only and so you can see in this la coral view led ostium looked quite significant so one thing was clear that we had to come up to the led ostium if not into the left main and so we took ivus runs uh, initially and we found that this was the mid uh, led lesion you can see that mla was too tight despite uh, dilatations and, this, and it, uh, the vessel was diffused the disease up to the ostial led and you can see the plaque burden at the ostial led was almost 57% with the area of around 6.5 and distal left main was also significantly diseased with a plaque burden of 62% which was not angiographically that much apparent so one thing was clear that we were now uh, we, in any case uh, for ostial lesion now they prefer that we should come from LM LMCA to LAD or LCX whichever is the case so in this case we had decided that we will come from LMCA now and this was the diagonal disease although it was very critical 2.63 mla despite a balloon dilatation but you can the major thing was that length of the disease was only 3 mm so we thought that visual would work uh, as good as two cent strategy we also had the luxury patient had stabilized by now we also had the luxury of uh, this oct at that moment both imaging modalities so we took a oct run as well just to be 100% sure that what we will be doing and i will show the importance of this slide later on uh, the plan was we would stent circ first so so that we because we had to jail uh, lcx by stenting from lmca to led so we thought let's fix up lcx first and after that we will do lmca to led stenting and with a crossover across both lcx and diagonal and then we will optimize both diagonal and lcx origin uh, after uh, that with uh, kissing balloon inflation as and when required so this was our plan we pre dilated lcx with a 2.5 into 10 mm balloon and after that deployed a stent uh, 3 to 20 across this LCX lesion in the, you can see in the third view and uh, this was the stent deployment and after that we, uh, we did a post dilatation with the 3.5 into 10 NC balloon we had already pre ms so we knew the sizes exactly and uh, this was the LCX result after uh, doing uh, stenting and we uh, then we assessed uh, with IVS uh, for the malapositions and uh, under expansions and we uh, believed that there was a malaposition in the LCX stent so we could we pre post dilated further with the 3.75 into 12 mm uh, NC balloon and we got a well opposed and expanded stent in the end so now was the time to fix up the led diagonal now we, we took a uh, th uh, 3.5 into 48 mm stent and so uh, we had to deploy a stent from lmca to led and uh, we uh, took a 48 mm stent so it could cover both the uh, distal lesion as well as uh, it could accommodate at least 6 to 8 mm uh, balloon nc balloon in the left main for a good pot so after this, uh, this was the stent deployment. Unfortunately, uh, while dealing with this, uh, one thing I was totally ignoring was that the flow in diagonal had already uh, was already compromised at this moment. And unfortunately, because I was dealing with the left main lesion using a single stent across both LCX and diagonal, my focus was more on the left main, and I kept on ignoring this diagonal uh, fl slow flow in diagonal. So this was the stent deployment. After that, uh, post. Uh, LMC to LED as expected because flow in diagonal was also already compromised. The diagonal got totally occluded. And then as a uh, first uh, resort measure, I did a good pot with a 3.5 mm balloon across the uh, diagonal origin so that I could scaffold some stretch towards the diagonal and probably it could improve some flow. But it did not improve any flow. And now I had to recross. I had a uh, roadmap. Uh, uh, jailed wire as the roadmap in the diagonal. I had to recross multiple wires were expected. So what I did, I initially, because if, if I do not post dilate of the LED stent and the LMCA part with a good pot, I would probably be going abluminally. So what I did, I initially post dilated the LED stent with a 3.5 into 12 mm NC balloon and then did a good pot in LMCA with a 4.5 into 8 mm balloon so that I do not uh, cross the uh, rewiring. I do not rewire abluminally. So after that, I tried recrossing into the diagonal uh, with end run through whisper filter X3. I tried everything, but unfortunately, none of the wires could go despite having a good roadmap with the jailed wire. And there was a flush block across the D1 ostium. So this was a major complication. Patient by that time was not that unstable, but he started complaining of chest pain. So as a last resort, because I knew where I had to go, so I took uh, Gaia 2 wire as the last resort with the microcatheter support. And uh, fortunately, with Gaia wire, I could recross into the diagonal. And fortunately, it looped and I crossed into the distal diagonal with a looped Gaia wire so that I do not cause, uh, probably uh, that was the reason I did not cause further complications. But unfortunately, and after that, uh, struts were dilated with a 1.5 into 10 mm NC balloon. But unfortunately, prog uh, there was a dissection noted in the uh, proximal part of the diagonal. And that was quite expected because I had recrossed with uh, Gaia. 
at this moment i exchanged the gaia wire using a micro catheter with a bmw wire because i did not want to add to my complication list so after this as sir already mentioned in the previous talk both dr kapoor and dr karan mentioned that we have to avoid taking too many injections because that would just propagate the dissection part so i did a ivs at this moment to see the exact site and exact length of the dissection and what i was dealing with and how to tackle this what type of stent what size of stent i would require to fix up the dissection so i uh, i remember that there was this uh, dissection was extending up to the 15 mm so i believe that i i took a 20 and there was a large intramural hematoma you can see this black portion uh, was in the diagonal so what i did now was the op- i had to stent it what strategy either i could go with a tap stenting or i could have gone with a culotte stenting i did not want to do a tap stenting here because one i am not comfortable with that the angle was not that good it was less than 70 probably it would have caused a longer neocarina secondly i would have required to give because the placement in that scenario is very very critical and i would have required lot of injections so i believed that it is better to go for a culotte so that i i i know the overlap and i can just overlap in the proximal part of the led stent and just fix up this uh, diagonal complication so i took a 2.75 into 28 mm uh, stent and uh, overlapped it in the previous stent for a segment of around 8 to 10 mm and after that you can see on the left hand side view this is very good diagram that because the previous stent was 3.5 now at 75 in stent there was a clear gap between the two stents so again proximal optimization was done with the 3.5 into 12 mm balloon and you can see on the uh, right hand side that now the both stents were uh, clearly overlapped and there was no gap in between then i did distal post dilatation of both diagonal as well as uh, led and then did the kissing balloon dilatation and after that a report was done with the th- 5 into 12 mm balloon and this was the on the right hand side you can see the result after optimization i got a good result across led and diagonal bifurcation and after that the point was whether i should dilate the st- uh, struts of lcx because i had p- deployed a stent from lmca to uh, led so i had jailed the lcx but since i had stented lcx distally and there is always a future scope of intervention although there was no pinching of lcx but but on oct i could appreciate that there were struts in front of the lcx ostium so i wanted to remove those struts and uh, secondly this oct picture also gives us very good one information because we were provisionally uh, this is a provisional approach across lcx so we want our wire to be as distal as possible and this is the uh, oct run after recrossing through the distal strut and clearly shows that we had crossed uh, distally and because if we don't cross distally and cross uh, proximally we would probably not be scaffolding our struts adequately towards the lcx ostium so then we did a kissing balloon inflation with the 1s to 1 size balloons in led and lcx at very low pressures so that we do not cause any dissections the idea was just to open the struts and this was after this is very very important once we have done a kissing balloon inflation it is very important that we do not cause a dissection across the side branch ostium and this this is a picture this is the oct run which clearly showed that we did not cause any dissection across the lcx ostium so this was the uh, uh, ct uh, pictures that finally there were no struts across the lcx ostium and finally we did a report with a 4.5 into 6 mm nc balloon and these were the final caudal views which we obtained we got a good result across both the bifurcations and uh, and this was the final result in the caudal views and this was the final leo cranial view and you can compare it with the pre uh, pci leo cranial view we got a good result finally so this was the pictorial diagram the only problem which we caused which we had not anticipated we had a overlapping of stents in the mid part of led which we which we could have avoided had we not uh, suffered uh, complication in diagonal so this was the ivs picture of the led diagonal poc and we got a very good poc figure of 8 you can appreciate very well expanded stents and this is again uh, the picture on oct that we got a very very good new crina formation so i will just skip this slide this is the ostial led we got a very good area of 10.68 this left main area was 15.58 and again reconfirmed on oct so what led to the side branch closure probably the large disease burden in the main vessel and what is the significant recoil of the side branch the reason why i chose the single stent strategy was because once you have a side branch lesion length of less than 10 mm one stent strategy is as good as two stent strategy and that was the reason why i went for a provisional strategy unfortunately it did it fired and this is the initial 
Sure, this is very good OCT learning that you can predict the outcome in the side branch with this uh, carina tip angle. If the carina tip angle is less than 50, probably we uh, mess up with the side branch. And secondly, from the branch point, this is the branching point up to the carina tip. If this length is less than 1.7 mm, these are the cases where probably you lose side branch after mean versus standing. And this was my, which I wanted to show in the last, that in my case, on the initial OCT run, this the, both these criteria were actually fulfilled, but unfortunately, I did not know about these criteria at that moment. And now I know it and I usually uh, do it in my all uh, future cases. Uh, so the take home message is provisional is as good as two cent strategy and wherever possible, we should go ahead with provisional because it gives us a chance to assess the anatomy at each step and we can try to keep uh, things safe uh, and simple. And whenever there is a complication, we can always upgrade to two cent strategy and we should use imaging and physiology liberally to optimize our results. Thank you so much. So it was a good elaborative extensive case. I'm, uh, I'm certain that you might have spent uh, more uh, two, three hours in the CAPS lab doing this case. You know, how much time it took? So it took around two hours, I guess. Okay. So overall, uh, you know, you, you landed with a diagonal occlusion, you managed it. I have two, three points. One, uh, to start with, the diagonal osteal uh, disease was very severe. It was very critical uh, bifurcation disease. LED and diagonal both and not a small diagonal. So maybe, you know, planning a two stent strategy uh, from the word go uh, would have obviated uh, such an issue uh, because, you know, uh, what I am concerned with the Q lot which you have done is the 2.75 stent which you took ultimately you made it to 3.5 or maybe 3.6 in the end. So usually Q lot is reserved for uh, main branch and side branch almost of the same caliber. You know, so that is one one thing which the disparity may uh, actually uh, now because of that over uh, dilatation of 2.75, the stent may have some deformity of the struts in the LED. And it's a double layered with some deformed struts, uh, maybe even full in future, but uh, that is, once you landed with that complication, that is the best way you could have managed and you manage it quite well but uh, retrospect I'm thinking that this could have been one thought that it's a uh, see if it is a small diagonal leave it if it is a significant size diagonal and to start with it's a bifurcation critical lesion then we are not expecting that it should behave well after stenting because there's a lesion and if you dilate it, obviously, you, we, we are giving a lot of dissected planes. So this remains debatable, one stent or two stents. But I think uh, another school of thought uh, which we could have worked on is two stent strategy to start with, to keep it simple. And then it could have been mini crush also. You could have actually avoided uh, the, another full layer of uh, you know stent into the LED and that also disparity of size. So that is my view. Otherwise, I think uh, all other things you have done well, and it was well managed. Uh, you took five into the LED. What was the stand set? Three point five. Three point five. LED size was three point five forty eight. Three point five. The left main uh, was around four point five, right? Four point five. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that way it's okay, but. Um, if you have more disparity of LED and left vein, then another way is that we start from the ostium and make an overlapping zone in the ostium uh, of the LED. Uh, if it is 2.5 LED, but left vein is 4, 4.5, then uh, the 2.75 may not take 4.5. So that way, uh, overlapping could be done at the LED ostium. But I'm impressed the way you managed it. It was extensive. It was not an easy case. Uh, so many things uh, happening. Initially, from the angiography, I thought that LED ostium looks diseased, but it uh, doesn't seem to be very critical to me. But if your eye was proved that this is a very significant plaque and uh, the, the vessel human was quite impeded, then it's a different story. But on the face of it, I thought that we can we could have started our stand from that ectatic zone in the LED just beyond the ostium to keep the uh, things simple. But uh, it all depends, you know, if I was suggested that it's a tight lesion there, then this is a better strategy. 
very well done. So exactly, sir. Actually, sir, so that is why sir, I did both IVS and OCTP to be hundred percent sure whether the ostium of LED. In fact, sir, it was a diffusely diseased vessel starting from the distal LED up to the ostium, and distal FN was also diseased. So, uh, so probably oh, had I not used imaging, definitely I would have stented from the LED part. But imaging, unfortunately, led me to problem. Uh, take a longer uh, and difficult approach. And regarding this, sir, D1, uh, whether I should have, I totally agree. And that was the basic learning from this case that probably I should have taken had I interpreted OCT images also initially, because the uh, plan in my mind was because since it was focal disease limited up only up to the ostium of uh, around 3mm into the diagonal ostium. So I just thought that I could get uh, I, I could go ahead with a provisional approach and if anything happens, I could recross it, just dilate it. If any dissection occurs, I can stent it, otherwise leave it as such. So that was my plan, but unfortunately there was flush occlusion. I could not recross with any of the wires so that it backfired in that manner. But probably you, you're right since it was a large diagram and a very tight uh, disease at the ostium, probably a two-stent strategy would have been better to uh, start Avoid with. Avoid all these things, yeah. Yes. So, they, so you were lucky in the end, you got, uh, you got into the diagonal, but uh, it could have been uh, another scenario where you you can't have a wire into the diagonal at all. So yes. that way, that way, I'm saying it's not the length of the lesion of the diagonal which matters. It's the uh, uh, extent and the criticality of the diagonal ostium. So exactly. That's why I'm saying once it is very critical, it's not going to change with balloon. It's ostium lesion, and after stent of the main vessel, it's going to behave rather uh, in a more awkward manner. But Finally, I think you managed it quite well. It's a complete revask, and uh, let's hope that patient keeps on doing well. Another thing which I further state is uh, very aggressive with the dual antiplaters in such patients with so much of metal. So never forget that we should not be casual in telling our patients that how important this is, and they should not at all think of uh, doing it on their own without a doctor's knowledge. Yes. So, so this patient is on a uh, Prazugal plus aspirin uh, combination for last one year and so he has just uh, completed one year. So I'm planning to switch it. Uh, probably I will give it a longer DAPT with switching to clopidogrel from Prazugal for 30 months at least and after that uh, probably monotherapy with aspirin. Good. So I think this was an audacious, bold intervention. So that's what I was saying that Konal keeps on uh, presenting such uh, ferocious cases. Very, very well done, Kunal. Um, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Be happy.